Before we get started today, just a quick note. I'm going to be talking about my personal opinion about some suspicions I have about the U.S. Soccer Federation's presidential election. I'm not saying it's the absolute truth. I'm not pointing the finger. I'm trying just to make sure you all know it's just my personal opinion. But there's been some stuff that's come out that's made me very, very suspicious. So we're going to talk about that. And then towards the end of the episode, we're going to talk about the one thing I can think that you can do that might make a difference if you're suspicious as well. Let's get to it. Newsflash. This guy, Sunil Galati, that guy, Don Garber, are going to do everything in their power to steal the U.S. Soccer Federation's presidential election so that Kathy Carter, their hand-picked successor for Sunil, who is the president of Soccer United Marketing, can win the election. Now, I would give you a photo right here of Kathy Carter, except you can't find a Creative Commons, like non-copyright version of a photo of her anywhere online. That should tell you something about her influence within the game. Now, what are we talking about here? Because that's a pretty large assertion. So maybe it's tinfoil hat time, I don't know. But there's a fantastic article that came out a couple uh, a couple days ago, maybe a week ago now, from Grant Wall. Grant Wall has worked at Sports Illustrated for 21 years. He's not some uh, recent graduate of journalism school. He had an article about how these two guys, if I can get that, yeah, those two guys, the current commissioner of MLS and the outgoing president of the U.S. Soccer Federation had a fancy schmancy dinner in New York City on the Upper West Side with Kathy Carter and uh, some folks from the New Jersey State Association and the Eastern New York uh, State Association of Youth Soccer. Now, why is that a big deal? Like, that sounds rather innocent. They're just, you know, I'm sure it was a coincidence that they were all there at the same time. Well, the, the idea here is that U.S. Soccer and MLS and Soccer United Marketing, really, have the ability to influence which state associations are going to vote for certain candidates. Well, how can they do that? Well, those organizations, primarily U.S. Soccer and Soccer United Marketing, who Don Garber also runs, coincidence, purely coincidence, um, when we have the Gold Cup in America, when we have international friendlies or matches in the United States, we don't have like a single stadium that we play at. We're a large country, so they they try and spread it out, right? Like you get some in Nashville and Columbus and San Jose and whatever. But in an election, you could offer, hey, if you vote for our candidate, we'll give you a friendly. Which and because the the local state association, the youth programs, whatever, get a cut of the revenue, right? It's good for business to have an international friendly or a gold cup game or whatever in your city. Like that's just a good thing. It, it brings soccer to the forefront. It's soccer around here to the forefront of the collective mind because it's happening in that city. So this dinner on the surface, you could, you, you could argue it always as just being this innocent thing, but I want to read you a couple of excerpts from it. Um, and I'm going to link to this article in uh, the description, I highly recommend you read it because it's it just makes you go like, well, that's pretty suspicious. Um, so, let's see. On December 8th, Garber told ESPN that the MLS would nominate Carter, but that that's where the league's support would end. Right? Because it would look bad otherwise if, if, if the league was really pushing her. Well, then why is he at this dinner, right? Um, it's not against the rules for Galati or Garber or whoever to lobby and campaign for her. Um, but it's like they're using their influence to, to make clear that they want those state associations to vote for her. Now, I'm not going to get into how the election works. It's rather complicated because it there's like voting blocks and it kind of waits out all these votes together. But New York and New Jersey are rather large state associations when it comes to this. So them rallying behind a candidate would be an indicator to other state associations. Um, let's see. So let, I'm going to talk about Garber here first, and then we're going to talk about some of the insane things that the guy that's the president of the Eastern uh, New York State Association had to say about Kathy Carter. So um, essentially, people said, wow, uh, 
Like, that's kind of weird, Garber, and he disagreed. I deny doing anything at the dinner to try and persuade anybody that there should be support for Kathy. If anybody says that, they've misconstrued my presence. This is right after this guy said that, like, Gulati and Garber support her. It's like, it, it's like these two people at the dinner and the, the president of the state association was like, yeah, they, like they said, like, we support her and you should probably vote for her. And then they're like, no, no, like, we, we didn't have to do that. Okay. Um, I appreciated being invited to the dinner and I would attend an invitation from any state association that wanted me to invite and wanted to invite me to dinner. Okay. So it's like any, any state that wants to invite me to dinner, I'm Don Garber. I'll come. Right. And then he says, and if other candidates were at that dinner, I'm sure if it was fitting my schedule, I would attend that dinner as well. Well, wait, you, you just said if a state association invited you, you'd go. And he, then he qualifies it to say, well, if there were other candidates there and it, and it, you know, fit my schedule, which it, you know, it might not, I might be too busy on those days. Um, then I would attend the dinner as well. Just the fact that he clarified that to me says, it's probably not the truth coming out of his mouth. Um, so <laughs> let's talk about, um, Sal Rapaglia, who is the president of this association that, uh, Grant Wall got all of his information from. Okay. I just, <laughs> it's just amazing. Um, Gulati made up his mind not to run in 2018, which I disagreed with hundred percent, but everyone makes his own decision. And then he says, you know, we heard about this girl, girl from Don Garber, you know, marketing, whatever. And she approached us and said, let's talk. New Jersey got the same call and the New Jersey and the Eastern New York delegations. We had a meeting with her and we asked a few questions and we are supporting her. She's, she's a grown woman. She's not a girl. He said he was impressed that she had not just worked on the business side, but had also played soccer in college and in one of the, and in one of the leagues in his association quote, she played soccer. She's not just a housewife. So this did not go over well with that state association. And they got into like a spat on Twitter with Grant Wall. And then people started going like, well, that's pretty suspicious. And they started mass blocking people. They made a threat against somebody and their account got closed down or they shut it down maybe voluntarily. And then it came back a few days later and mysteriously said our account had been hacked. Okay. I don't know if you've been around the internet very long, but anytime somebody says their account got hacked on Twitter, it's probably not true. Especially when it goes in line with like, if you, if you go down this story of these two guys are promoting and pushing Kathy Carter, and maybe they're dangling some carrots to get these state associations to go along with it. And the 76 year old president of the soccer association was probably a little too vocal with a sports reporter who published it in sports illustrated and now realizes, uh Oh, I probably made a mistake and he wants to like backtrack on his comments. And then they start getting public pressure and they start firing back and then it disappears and comes back and they say they're hacked. It definitely wasn't a hack. So this leaves you going, okay, so what, what can I do? Because you can't do much. It's not like we could, we go to the polls as soccer fans, right? We can't just say, well, this is who I want. Um, it comes down to the various voting blocks. There's a professional athlete block. There's like um, the various leagues get a vote, although it's heavily skewed. I think it's like 51% towards MLS. There's actually been two really good uh, letters that have come public where NASL is going like, this isn't right because NWSL, the women's league, is like something it's a it's below 10 percent of the vote like all these other leagues really don't get a vote because mls has got 51 percent of their voting block um all these types of things going on and you're going like okay so all the youth leagues kind of come under one thing and they get a vote okay there's like a lifetime council those 13 people's votes means pretty much as much as all the state youth association votes which makes zero sense so what can you do as the casual fan and I want to highly, highly encourage you. It's a little late in the game, I think. But let me encourage you, reach out to your state association. I want to tell you, I did this several months ago. I reached out. I live in Tennessee. I reached out to my Tennessee association because I actually thought my my son, my four-year-old son U5 team, I thought 
the club that he's with rolled up under our state association. It actually doesn't, which is backwards, because part of, of our club does. So his part rolls up under a different organization. But I sent an email off to the president of my state association, and I got a response, no joke, back within 30 minutes. It was during a weekday, so it was like at 2 o'clock I sent the email, and I had an email back by like 2.33 or something crazy. I had a phone call with him, I think either later that day or the next day, because I was like, what is going on here? What are your thoughts? It was right after we didn't qualify for the World Cup. What's going on with Sunil? And he walked me through a bunch of different things, not just about the voting, but about how parts of my club rolled up under his organization and my son's part didn't, but he was still glad to talk to me. The folks that are local to you, that's as good as you're going to get. Like we can go out and say like, hey, Sunil, you shouldn't be backing somebody. And like, that's not going to change anything. But if you're reaching out to your local leadership, which is pretty much all you can do, that's going to have at least some sort of an impact. Like you can do something maybe with the, the, the club that you're in or the, or the parents of the club that your kids are in to have a conversation with the state association or with your club leadership to have a conversation to see just what the conversation looks like from their level. They may have a different perspective than I do or that you do, but it was a really insightful conversation I had with my Tennessee State Association, and I don't really technically roll up under his organization. That's what really impressed me, how quickly he got back with me, and how thorough he was in explaining various aspects of the soccer pyramid that we have here, or lack thereof. So that's the one thing I'm going to recommend that you do, because we can't make these guys change their minds. We can't really influence public opinion, aside from maybe do a little bit on Twitter and then encouraging journalists like Grant Wall. I think it's massive that you have a veteran reporter coming out and essentially dropping a bit of a bombshell on this story and kind of breaking open the, hey, we're probably not as clean as we'd like to be at the top of the organization. There's probably some shady stuff going on. Is there more? Well, we need more journalists that feel like, okay, if I go do this, people are going to buy my publication, which then my, you know, my editors are going to like, and they're going to send me out to do more of this type of work. The thing that I think is going to happen is that Kathy Carter is going to get elected. And then over the next four years, once this guy's gone, all this dirt is going to start coming out. And that I would, I, it's not really acceptable, but if we start to peel back some of the layers of corruption and nastiness that inevitably, if you look at FIFA, we can't be any different, right? Like we're, we're attached to FIFA. Galati is significantly attached to FIFA in terms of being on the executive council and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's probably where this ends up. But if you want to have a chance at getting somebody else in there, somebody that might have a different perspective, somebody that might be able to oppose some of the corruption that inevitably exists, maybe an Eric Winalda, a Kyle Martino, you know, some of the other candidates that aren't handpicked from the organization that markets for MLS and U.S. soccer, then I think your state association is your best bet. You just like look up, enter your state, and then soccer association, and you go to their website. You can find the contact list of the executives that are running your organization. Drop them an email. Drop them a call. All right. If you've enjoyed this, it's been a bit of like, I, I don't know how much of this is true. I'm just kind of trying to read the tea leaves here and go, that seems kind of suspicious, and there's a significant lack of transparency within U.S. soccer, MLS, Soccer United Marketing about what's going on in our country. So I'm not trying to say all these things are the truth. I'm just trying to tell you, hey, this article came out. This is what I see. Mm, it looks a little weird. Here's something that you can do. So if you've enjoyed that, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because I'm going to continue our series on how to fix U.S. soccer outside of this election stuff. I've kind of done some some other things here with the election just because it's been kind of crazy. Um, but by now, there's some other things popping up around me, around my face, other series or continuing the, uh, the U.S. soccer series that should be up there. Make sure you check those out. There's a link here for Patreon. If you don't know what that is, that's a way for you to be able to support the channel aside from watching ads. And uh, thanks for watching. It means a lot that you guys are here. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think is actually going on in this election and let me know who you think is going to win. We'll see you in the next one.